Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Let me see if I can hit the microphone button here. Still getting the hang of things, uh, microphones and announcements and all the things that uh, will come in time, but uh, we are gathered here for the purpose of God's invitation to, to give us his love and his forgiveness, so that is why we are gathered this day. Um, I, I also have to get the hang of making announcements, um, so um, anybody have anything? No? Okay. Uh, I know we do have uh, Kyle, if you just want to mention what's happening right after service. We're going to have a very quick donor meeting to uh, send a call to a great teacher for the day school. That would be the only item on the agenda. So please, uh, after the closing song, just uh, remain seated. You also may have noticed a little something new in the sanctuary here. Uh, <laughs> not David, but the, uh, the other thing, the three-legged thing. And we are going to be uh, broadcasting uh, our services here from the sanctuary. Um, in this day and age, it's, it's something that probably needs to be done. Um, people aren't able to get out as they once were. So we have the privilege and, uh, and the opportunity and the, the know-how to, to broadcast our service into the homes of people. And that is such a blessing for us. So um, just know that uh, the word of God is, is being proclaimed not only here, but through here and out into the world. It's, uh, that's all I have for announcements, unless there's something that needs to be mentioned. Seeing none, let's uh, stand then for the singing of our opening hymn. Let us 
let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are unable to sin We have sinned against you in the law Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the 28th chapter of Jeremiah. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word that that prophet comes true, comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? <coughs> Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband as she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is freed from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would have not known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good 
in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. And we stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
text for the message this morning is from the Gospel lesson recorded in the 10th chapter of St. Matthew. This reading from Matthew continues what some of you may remember from last week, is somewhat of a troubling discourse from Jesus as he sends out the disciples and ultimately the church, sending them out to proclaim the gospel. That beautiful message of sin forgiven because of what God has done for us in Christ. And that sounds so harmless. And yet it is anything but. Because the message intended to bring salvation to the world for God so loved the world, that message that brings salvation to the world also brings strife and hatred and division, and sadly, division in some of the closest relationships we have. The first verse of the text for today, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. So far the text, dear, confused and perplexed brothers and sisters in Christ. We should be confused, a little bit perplexed. Why? Because Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And the words from the prophet Isaiah may be running through your mind now, where Jesus, the promised Messiah, Isaiah writes 700 plus years before the Messiah comes, he calls him what? The Prince of Peace. The one who will come in the name of the Lord, the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Anointed One, the one who would make all things new, Isaiah says, this one is the Prince of Peace. And he comes, and what does he say? I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And we're confused. Because we know from history what the gospel message has done. It has saved countless souls, but it has also caused that division of which Jesus speaks. Our confusion comes because we have an understanding of what peace is not based upon what Jesus has come to do. We have our own definitions of how peace is achieved, what it is and how it is achieved. That's a challenge because we need to understand God's word for us. The message of Christ for us, especially when it comes to that peace that we so long for. So what do we do? We stand in front of God and we take lead. And we tell God, this is how peace can be achieved. And we do it in several ways as humankind over the, the centuries, the millennia. We seek peace how? Through Option one, that superior show of force. So that the enemy looks at you and says, I'd be foolish to come up against such a force. It's overwhelming, it's devastating. Why would I even begin to engage in battle when I can't hope to win? Now in the history of humankind, that approach has had some success. It's been shown to work. But can there be true and lasting peace when it's based on fear and intimidation of others? Not as Christ would have. Well, how about peace then through the all-out attack? Show no mercy, utter destruction. Anything that threatens peace 
destroy it. And when the threat is removed, the thought is peace will then reign. The cost of peace as defined by this, it leaves unspeakable bloodshed, suffering, bodies piled up. Well, how about a third approach? Instead of the show of force and the all-out attack, how about the, the passive retreat? He who fights and runs away, you know, lives to fight another day. I've retreated back in elementary school. The bully, the big bully, the one that the whole school, even the teachers were afraid of. <laughs> he told me after school, he used some colorful language, but I got the picture. After school, I was dead. So what did I do? I retreated. I left the school by a different door. I found a different way home. And I made it home safe. But I had to go back to school. The retreat, how far, how fast, and how long does one have to run to be at peace? You can see the flaws in all of these. Flaws because they're not what Jesus is talking about. The fatal flaw in all these approaches is that they have the same starting point. And that's me. And that's you. And that's all of human history that seeks peace apart from the way Jesus defines it. Some of you may remember a song it was actually written back in the 50s by a couple named Miller. It was redone many, many times, sung by a lot of general choirs throughout the years. Let there be peace on earth. Right? It's a pretty song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. See the problem. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. What did Jesus say about that? He said, out of the heart comes what? All manner of evil. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin where it can actually occur as God desires. And it isn't me. And it isn't you. It is through Christ alone who comes to be the true Prince of Peace, doing so by suffering the sword. He goes to the cross. And what happens to him on the cross? He suffers and dies and is actually pierced with a sword. By his wounds, Isaiah would also say, by his wounds, we are healed. And Paul would say it so beautifully, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not through our own hearts, not through our own sinful desires, not through anything that mankind can ever come up with. But only through the way that God intends. Because the price of peace was paid by the Prince of Peace. We gather in his name. We gather in the name of Jesus who gives to us peace. My peace I give to you, he says, not as the world gives, but as the Father sends me. I bring you peace and now I send you. That's true peace. Peace that transcends all understanding. Peace that comes and transcends all the disasters of humankind. 
Peace that comes in the midst of pandemic. Peace that comes in an unsure future. And peace that allows us to go and to serve. And peace that looks unlike the world can even understand. Peace that comes from offering a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty. Peace that comes through offering food to someone who is hungry. Peace that comes from comforting someone who is hurt. Peace that comes from God to us and through us. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. We go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite you to please stand. And we will confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. Father Almighty, and from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray you so to rule and govern your church and all pastors and ministers, that your church may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, defended against all adversity, and protected from all adversaries, and thereby faith may be strengthened and love increase in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant health, wisdom, integrity to all who are in authority over us, especially for our president and vice president, the governor of this state, the Congress, all legislative bodies, all judges and magistrates. Empower them with your spirit and with respect to your word that they would serve your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the punishment of wickedness so that we may all lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness. Lord, in your mercy, in your grant to those in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, the healthful spirit of your grace for healing, strength, comfort, and relief. Bless especially those who suffer for the sake of your name and for the proclamation of your word. Hear us on behalf of those who have requested our prayers and those we name before you silently in our hearts. Grant to them all courage to stand firm in their afflictions and grant to them patience until the day of your deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, preserve us, Lord, from pestilence and every evil. Give to us favorable weather. Cause the fruits of the earth to prosper that we may enjoy them in due season and offer you praise and thanksgiving for all of your goodness. Pledge your blessing to all honorable vocations and honest industry, that we may serve where our skills and abilities may be of most use. Bless the arts and music, that we may please you and be encouraged by all that is good, right, true, and beautiful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and faithfulness, Bless the homes and families of your people, that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Grace to the widow, the orphan, 
all mothers with child, the aged and the infirm, that you would grant them comfort, aid, and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things for which you would have us ask, we pray you to grant for the sake of the bitter suffering and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.